Hi guys, I bought a frequency meter last year. Probably you already watched it in some of my videos. I bought it and when I saw the pictures in internet, I realized the frequency meter was broke. Yes, many reasons for it. One, the device is not on in the pictures. Two, there is no power card. So probably the seller himself didn't know if it was working or not because the power cord was missing. What triggers my curiosity about this device was the serial number I watched in the picture. It's a very low serial number. Anything under the first thousand and after 25 years is a nice device to keep because the price. So why to not give a try? When I'm going to buy equipment second hand, I always make sure I am able to repair it, I can get the parts, or in the worst case scenario, I am able to keep it as a spare part for another device I already have in use. In this case, the only chance to everything to go wrong is probably with the programmable part, the EEPROM in the device. By the rest of the components, most of them I can get them. So now let's take a look to it. So I adapt the power cord. I didn't want to remove the original connector because maybe I can find the right cord in the future and replace it by the correct one. So temporarily permanent, I will use this power cord by the moment. After changing the power cord, I realized the device didn't turn on. Of course, that's the reason why it was on sale. So now let's try to find the problem and let's try to repair it. This is the plan. If the unit turns on, we can watch something in the display but it's not working fine in the electronic system, in the digital system. Probably we got a problem with the 5 volts power supply. If the unit turns on, makes readings, but it's out of calibration, we got some problems, some issues with the timing, with the clock here. If the unit turns on, looks like it works, but doesn't get any reading, that means there is something burned or damaged in the analog input. If the unit is totally dead, that, that's our case, then we have a problem in the power supply, and if it is totally dead, the problem could be somewhere from the input line switch, transformer, output, voltage regulators, anywhere on the way. If the problem is general, has to be the related part that will control everything. So let's go for it. What I'm going to do now is a continuity test because I need to test the loop between the mines, the fuse, the switch and the transformer. For this circuit, I have a filter, a chalk for radio frequency, and I have components there too. So everything is going to be checked now. The measurement I'm expecting is something handable. What do I mean? A very low resistance is going to tell me there is a short circuit then I cannot test it like this. I will need a serial lamp with it. But something close to the order of hundreds of ohms will be okay. Later, when I get the AC and 50 or 60 Hertz in the transformer, it will get its impedance and that resistance is going to change to higher one. But by the moment, I need to know if there is something not in the order of low ohms, but close to the hundreds, loop resistance between these two connectors.
80 plus ohms is okay to me. Next measurement will be the voltage output in the transformer. In this winding, I have about 18 volts. Here is about 19 and a half. Now we are talking about 12 volts. There are some extra wires coming down hill from here. Most of the time we find lacking of power. The first thing we can think after doing the inspection of the power cord, connector, fuse, switch, transformer is the power transistors. We got some power transistors. I don't know if this is the main power transistor. I don't know if those ones could be voltage regulator or power transistors. We'll be figured it out soon. But the first thing I have to inspect is in this area the following connector with those wires and find the pinout for this transistor is T5. It's the 2N3055, a very classic one. This is our 0 0.22 ohms resistor and the multimeter says it's right. Now let's test the transistor. There is one diode here. That's the other diode. And there is no short circuit there. So far, it looks like our power transistor is good. For the following test, we have to check if there is voltage in the collector. If there is voltage in the collector and there is no voltage in the output, there is something wrong with this stage. When I did the voltage reading, I got voltage from the output of the bridge rectifier to the collector in the transistor. That voltage has to be higher than 5 volts. Let's remember that. So whatever is the bridge rectifier, we get a voltage drop here and about 0 0.7 volts drop there plus the 5 volts in the load. So there is voltage here, but there is no voltage in the output. Then, I went to the chip and I inspected the input in the chip. Not the input, I mean the power supply. And there is no voltage in the power supply for the chip, for the voltage regulator. Back to the schematic. If there is no voltage here, I make an inspection. Where is this voltage come from? It comes from this stage, from this output, from this transistor. And this stage, it says that is P8. P8 is in the timing board. So what I have to do is to inspect the connections and make sure there is voltage supply for it and it's working and there is voltage output with regulation of 12 volts. This is the output line from the transistor. Goes to this pin in the connector. It should be 12 volts. And this is the input power for the voltage regulator. And it's in pin number one. This is the bridge rectifier. And this is the capacitor and there is voltage there. Taking a look to the board, there is a track from here 
to there. And please pay attention to the following thing. There is not one volt. But here there is 20 volts. Here there is not. So that means in this point there is an open circuit between this pin and the barrier. I have to remove some of the humidity in the device. Also, it was full of cat hair. Guys, you have no idea how, my, how much cat hair was in there. Probably we can identify the cat after that. Let's make a test now. Aha, uh -huh. that was our problem. Not too bad for 120 megahertz. Now 100 megahertz. All right, it's working now, and it looks it was just one solder drop, but intermittent problems are very difficult to catch. It looks like somebody got enough and decided to give this equipment away for a few coins. I bought it for 35 euros. Now I'm going to use it for my future projects. Thanks guys by watching the video. Do not forget to subscribe and if the troubleshooting techniques helps you in something in the future, do not forget to give a like now. See you next time.